Merry Christmas. Thank you so much for uh, joining us tonight for celebrating Jesus' birth. Um, I'm going to read a scripture to start us off um, tonight. Um, and just a couple of weeks ago, I, I wrote a, a Tuesday message about um, the prophecies in the Old Testament. Do you know there are more than 500 prophecies in the Old Testament that talked about the coming Messiah, Jesus, that he fulfilled every single one of them? And I'm going to read one of you tonight that talks about his birth. And it is so specific about where he was born in Bethlehem. And, you know, you hear the story of Bethlehem, you think Bethlehem's a big place. Well, it is a tiny, tiny little place. And you can imagine um, that this prophecy of him being born, it wasn't that he was being born in this big city. He was born in this very small little town. Uh, and so we get to celebrate that tonight, the coming of our Savior. So let me read uh, Micah chapter 5, verses 2 through 5. But as for you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, too little to be among the clans of Judah. From you, one will come forth for me to be ruler in Israel. His times of coming forth are from long ago, from the days of eternity. Therefore, he will give them up until the time. And when she who is in labor has given birth, then the remainder of his kinsmen will return to the sons of Israel. And he will arise and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord in his majesty of the name of the Lord God, and they will remain, because at that time he will be great to the ends of the earth. This one will be our peace. Mm. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Steve. Uh, if you would, go ahead and stand to your feet. We are going to worship uh, the Lord. That's what we're here to do tonight. And <clears throat> as I was talking with uh, someone just a moment ago, they were saying, you know, this is our first Christmas Eve service, our first candlelight service. We've never been to one. And uh, it was like, well, uh, you know, it's very similar to how we typically do services. We're going to worship the Lord Jesus. Uh, that's what we're here to do. Uh, but it's a little different in the sense that we're all here as a family, uh, you know, brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, the night before we celebrate Christmas. And uh, just a, a great time. to. We're going to have some songs we're going to sing. Uh, we'll bring uh, just a, a sermon tonight. Uh, but a lot of scripture readings, lots of songs. And so we just want to praise and worship together tonight.
Yeah, indeed. Yeah, praise him. Uh, praise him. Shouts of praise. All applause to the Lord and Savior. <clears throat> Joyful, joyful, we adore you, God of glory, Lord of love. Our hearts unfold like flowers before you, opening to the sun above. Got you on that one. Joyful, joyful, we adore you, God of glory, Lord of Love. Our hearts unfold like flowers before you, opening to the sun above. The melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. A joyful, joyful, we adore you. Hearts unfold like flowers before you. Joyful, joyful, we adore you. Joyful, we adore you. All your works with joy surround you. Earth and heaven reflect your ways. Stars and angels sing around you. Center of unbroken. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Joyful, joyful, we adore you. Hearts unfold like flowers before you. Joyful, joyful, we adore you. Joyful. Adore you. One more time. Joyful, joyful, we adore you. Hearts unfold like flowers before you. Joyful, joyful, we adore you. Joyful, we adore you. Yeah, praise him. Praise him. Amen, amen. Indeed. Ooh, that's really loud. <laughs> <coughs> I'll keep it down here. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this evening. We're going to go to Scripture and read from Isaiah 9, verse 2 through 7. I'd say follow along, but it's dark in here, so you can just <laughs> listen to me. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the, and the staff of his shoulder and the rod of his oppressor you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping, tramping warrior in battle, tumult, and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. Mm. And on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with your son. Mm -hmm. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, what a great scripture. A couple of those verses leading into maybe you weren't as familiar with, but uh, certainly uh, Christmas passage classic in Isaiah, you know, for unto us a child is born. And uh, that's why we're here, you know, to celebrate the Lord Jesus who... Uh, you know, the, the word became flesh and dwelt among us and uh, in that manger in Bethlehem. And so let's continue to sing to him. For unto us 
a child is born, a son is given, a son is given. For unto us a child is born, a son is given, a son is given. The Messiah, oh, to see him, to see him high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. For unto us a child is born, a son is given, a son is given. For unto us a child is born, a son is given, a son is given, the Messiah. Oh, to see him, to see him high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, 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 a holy. child is born holy 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 for unto us a child is born holy 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 again for unto us a child is born holy 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 for unto us a child is I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Amen. Amen. Yeah, praise him indeed. And, uh, you know, that's the, the purpose, obviously, of our gathering is worship and praising. But as I think of the words of that song, open the eyes of my heart and, uh, you know, that I want to see you. And if the Lord has revealed the truth of the gospel to you uh, and you are a believer, you know, that's uh, give all praise and glory to him, you know, for, for our salvation, for all things that he has chosen to, to save us, to die on the cross for us. Uh, and just the life that we have through Jesus Christ. Uh, that's certainly what we celebrate tonight, but as a believer, not just tonight, uh, but tomorrow during Christmas and every day after that that we have, uh, that, that is our goal. So let's continue here to sing here tonight.
Christ was born. Oh, night, oh, holy night, oh, night divine. Yeah. Praise him. What a mighty and awesome God we serve. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Ask Brother Jason to do a scripture reading for us tonight. Thank you, brother. Good evening. Uh, thank you for all being here this evening. Um, reading from Isaiah 7, chapters, or chapter 7, 13, and 14. And just to give you a little context of what the scripture is about. Isaiah comes to Ahaz, uh, the king of Judah, and uh, he's trying to reaffirm him not to worry about what's about to happen um, as Judah is about to be attacked by two different kings. He says not to, not to worry. And so um, it just basically talks about him um, coming up to Isaiah's telling him not to worry and that um, Jesus or that God will give him an, a, a uh, a sign to not worry, and he said to just to ask for anything, and Ahaz says, I, I can't do that, I'm not, not worthy of that, and so God basically tells him, okay, well, this is your sign then, and so this is the scriptures. Then he said, listen now, house of David, it is too trivial a thing for you to try the patience of men, that you will try the patience of God as well. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and she will name him Emmanuel. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Thank you, brother. Well, so good to uh, see everybody this evening. I know I had the opportunity to meet a few uh, new faces and visitors that are in town, and I know I saw a bunch more come in as we were singing, and so always glad to, to see uh, new faces here in the Lord's house, but also uh, many of our members uh, who are here this evening with us, and uh, we had a great time of worship this morning together, and, and just glad to see y'all uh, back again. Christmas Eve services uh, uh, just holds a special place to me. It's one, it's one of my favorite, if not my favorite service of the year, maybe that and Easter, uh, but just a, a great time as we uh, just sit here and, and, you know, just listen to the Christmas narrative. Uh, that we may have heard it 10 times or 50 times or 100 times or 1,000 times or however many times you've heard, uh, maybe the first time. And so I uh, pray that the Lord will just do the work that, that he does. And so as I begin this evening, uh, our text is going to be Luke 2. Uh, if you want to grab your Bibles there in front of you or if you brought yours with you or if you want to just uh, listen, that's okay also. Uh, I'm not going to have any points up there or anything this evening. I, I'm trying to keep this evening uh, simple. And with that, uh, we want to keep the main thing the main thing, right? We say that often. The main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. And so that's certainly what we're going to try to do here tonight. Uh, so it is not my intention to preach for an hour and have a 10-point sermon and d dig and dive into all the nuances and theological things that are, that are in the text here tonight. Uh, tonight our focus is going to continue to be on Jesus and on what he has come to do in his first Advent uh, as we've been coming through an Advent series here the last couple weeks. And, uh, and certainly we are looking forward to his next coming, right? His second Advent. Remember that uh, word Advent just simply means coming or arrival. And so as we celebrate this first Advent, we certainly look forward to uh, the next and the second Advent. And so as we come to the text tonight, uh, I'm going to read through the first 14 verses and, and simply just make some observations and a, a few applications uh, along the way. Uh, I mentioned that it is Advent season, and so we um, have had a couple Advent sermons. This morning we did, for those of you who have returned. Uh, this morning we've talked about, um, you know, the uh, going back to a couple weeks, we actually started with hope, right? We started talking about uh, the living hope that we have in Christ, and we talked about the incomprehensible peace that we have in Christ. And then this morning uh, we talked about the unspeakable joy that we have in Christ, and even the song, Unspeakable Joy, that we just sang here this evening. Uh, and so tonight, we actually conclude our, um, our series on, on Advent and for Advent uh, with one on love. And so the title of the sermon tonight is simply Indescribable Love. <clears throat> so when you think about Christmas, 
Uh, maybe you think about, uh, and I pray you think about Jesus and what we're here to celebrate, but perhaps in your own family, you have certain traditions uh, and things that you practice, uh, you know, whether it was something that you did when you were growing up, uh, just thinking about, you know, baking Christmas cookies, that a lot of you have got some cookies from some of y'all, y'all got some cookies and stuff from our family this morning, and so uh, we don't all practice or celebrate Christmas in the same way, Right? We all kind of have our different things that, that we do. Um, some of us uh, dress up on, on Christmas morning, and uh, I know you're, some of you are probably thinking, what are you talking about? Who does that? Uh, but some people dress up really nice on Christmas Day, and they, uh, they go and they have a nice Christmas meal with their family and do those types of things, while other of us just hang out in our PJs and just veg out all day uh, and watch the 24-hour marathon of Christmas Carol, right, over and over and over in the background. Uh, but, you know, some of us uh, do that also. We have our favorite movies that we watch. Uh, perhaps you like the classics like Miracle on 34th Street uh, or It's a Wonderful Life. I love that one. We haven't watched that yet this year. That's on, that's on the list. Uh, or you maybe like the, the newer ones. Um, uh, think about Home Alone. We just watched that the last couple days. Or Elf, if some of you watch those things. And so, you know, it looks different um, for some of us. Uh, some of us open presents on Christmas Eve. Uh, some people wait and open their gifts on Christmas Day. Uh, we actually have a, a practice that we do. Uh, I know the kids are all excited. They've already been talking about it, where we open our gifts on Christmas morning, but we open one gift on Christmas Eve. So uh, we're all looking forward to that uh, tonight. And so my point is, uh, you know, that we, we perhaps celebrate in different ways. And so Christmas may not look the same at your house as it does at my house. But with that being said, as believers, uh, there, a, there are a couple elements that should be a part of each one of our Christmases. And we bl I believe we see those things in our, our text here tonight. So uh, let's get into it. I'm going to read from uh, Luke chapter 2, the first 14 verses. And uh, you can just listen or follow along if you have your Bible. Verse 1 says, Now in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census was to be taken in all the inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone was on his way to register for the census, each to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, in order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was with child. While they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Verse 8, in the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flocks by night. And the angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel of the Lord said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. Heavenly Father, thank you, God, so much for this text. Thank you so much for uh, the truth of your word, the truth of the gospel, a Lord, that has uh, revealed the truth of this gospel to us uh, about your, your son, about the uh, life that we can have eternally through Jesus Christ our Lord, and, and because of his birth, through his life, his death, his burial, and his resurrection, Lord, uh, we can have eternal life. We can be forgiven of our sins. And so, Lord, I pray tonight that if anyone hear this gospel message that does not know you, I pray that you would do what only you can do, that you would open the eyes of their heart, that they would see you as, as Savior and as Lord, and that they would understand now this living hope, this eternal uh, inheritance that they have to look forward to. And God, for, for us, for your church uh, we are here and just give you thanks for this salvation. We give you thanks for this life we have. Uh, every breath that we take, Lord, we know that you have planned each one of them. And uh, Lord, we just, we love you. We praise you. We worship you. We give you thanks uh, for you are holy and an awesome God. And we love you. And we pray tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. 
So we looked at this passage here in Luke 2 uh, this morning, and, and many of you were here for that. And our focus was on some of the characters present in this chapter. Uh, we discussed joy this morning, and we looked at uh, joy from the perspective of some of the people that we meet even later in this text after verse 14 there, as we talked about the joy, remember, of the shepherds and the joy that they had being invited to this amazing thing, this, this birth of the Savior. Uh, we saw the joy of Simeon and how, remember, how joyful he was at the temple when he got to see Joseph and Mary and, and hold the Son of God, the Savior, and see him with his own eyes. What an amazing thing. Uh, then we saw the joy of Anna, uh, this 84-year-old widow that we meet, and the joy that she has in proclaiming the truth of who this child is. And so we also, in this text, not only do we see joy, uh, but we see the indescribable love of God on display here in this text, in the account of the birth of Christ. Uh, this is the incarnation of Jesus Christ, the incarnation of the Son of God, the second person in the Trinity. Uh, and that's just a mind-blowing thing to me. Because in the birth of this child, again, we see the love of God and we see his salvation. Just as Simeon said, remember, I, have, you, I can depart in peace now, I can die in peace now because I have seen the Lord's salvation. That's who we are talking about. And remember that he was born for one reason. The purpose that he was born was to go to the cross and to suffer and to die so that he could raise from the dead, so that he could defeat and conquer death and sin and Satan and all the things that hold us in bondage, and we could be free from that. We could be released from that because of what Jesus has done. And really, that's why we gather together uh, every Lord's Day and whenever we gather, but even tonight as we gather to recognize, you know, uh, uh, the nativity set and the little baby Jesus in the manger, as we gather to think about that, to celebrate that, we must also in our minds fast forward to the end of his incarnation to get to his death and burial and resurrection because it's in that that we have eternal life. Praise God indeed. Amen. So we remember that as a church, not just today, but every day. So as we consider the birth narrative here uh, in the manger and the setting and all those things that we see here, uh, let us consider the gospel. Uh, that's what this is all about. It's always about the gospel, uh, that, that the Son of God came down here to live a perfect life, to die a death on the cross, uh, to die a death that we deserve because of our sin against God, and yet he chose to give himself and lay his life down that he would pay the penalty that we owe because of our sin, so that our slate, that our debt would be wiped free, that we would be washed clean and free of the sin that we've committed and forgiven of those sins. But not only that, right? Remember, in justification, you have two things going on. You have the forgiveness of sins, and you also have the righteousness of God being credited to you as believing in him by faith. And that's the gospel. And so that is what we are, are celebrating. That is what we are called to believe. And so if you are hearing this gospel truth tonight uh, and do not know Jesus as Lord and Savior, I would say to you, repent of your sins, believe in the gospel, and be saved. As we look at this text here tonight, I, I want to make two observations uh, for us that will also serve as application um, for us. We see them in the angels here, so maybe continuing with our character study from this morning, uh, we now look at these angels, these uh, messengers, right? Remember the word angel means messenger, and these are messengers of God. And we see in verse 10 how it says, they bring good news of great joy. Then if you look forward to verse 13, it says uh, that they are praising God. So that's the simple application for us. Those are the two points. Uh, we see them um, bringing good news and praising God. So if you're a fan of alliteration and that helps you to remember uh, the points of application or the, the headings as we go through, then perhaps you think of uh, profess and praise, okay, or proclaim and praise, uh, or declare and devotion. Um, or announce and acclaim. I'm doing this for Pastor Brian's sake, and he's not even here. So pretty funny, but uh, you guys can let him know I hit like five or six alliterations in there. That'd be great. Uh, but, you know, choose your favorite. That's, that's the point we're trying to, to look at, the point I'm trying to make here in the text tonight. So to set the stage, most of us are probably familiar with this story. Uh, remember, it's about 4 to 6 B.C., Okay, and uh, we're in Bethlehem, and it's about 2,000 years ago, so from, from our day. And we see in verse 1 to 7, there's a virgin named Mary. She is betrothed to a man named Joseph, and she is pregnant with a child by the Holy Spirit. 
they're traveling to Bethlehem uh, for a Roman census that has taken place, and we spoke about that this morning. This is in God's providence that he is moving them uh, from where they were staying and moving them now to the city of David, to Bethlehem, because one of those, another one of those prophecies Pastor Steve spoke of said that he would be born in this place. And so uh, we see that through the Old Testament, and we see that fulfilled in this text right here. So uh, this is how God chose to take on flesh. This is how God chose to enter into our world, uh, was, again, humbly in a manger, and uh, to call some shepherds that are in a field. And, and just this scene, uh, if a man wrote this, if we were to write this, it would not be written like this. Uh, we would go and we would profess, uh, we would send a herald out into the kingdom. The king is being born, the king's son is being born, and that is what the kings did. That's what men used to do. That's not how the Son of God entered into this world. We see humility in Christ. In verses 8 to 12, we see our first point of emphasis, uh, which is to profess or to proclaim. And it says that in the same region, there were some shepherds in the fields watching over their flocks by night. And even as I say that, uh, I, I still hear that in Linus's voice. Right? Are you guys with me? This is, it's, it's still the, this is the Peanuts uh, text, right? This is the, uh, if you haven't watched the Charlie Brown Christmas special, uh, you know, I think it's been going on since 1960 or 65. That long, that show has been on uh, the, the airwaves, and it, that, that movie is proclaiming the truth of the gospel, remember? They're all like, what is Christmas all about? What is Christmas all about? And finally, Linus steps up and says, you know what? I'll tell you what Christmas is all about. And this is the text that he reads. And while they're, they're a shepherd now, watching over their flocks by night. And so we see an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them. Uh, an angel, the messenger of God. And this messenger comes bringing good news, it says, of great joy. And so uh, the word translated here is good news is this word, uh, yuan galitso, and it's the word that is used for good news. It's translated many times as gospel. So remember, that's what gospel means. Gospel is the good news. It's the greatest news you could ever hear, amen? Uh, so that's the word we're talking about here. These angels are coming from God, professing and proclaiming the gospel to the people here, to these shepherds who have been called to this scene, and telling them of this Christ, of this child, of this baby that's been born, that has been foretold, I mean, since Genesis chapter 3, right? It's been foretold for a long time. And so the people have been looking for this, uh, this one. And this one is remarkable. If you look in verse 11, if you have your Bibles open, it's remarkable in verse 11. It says, for today in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And the remarkable thing here is that you actually have these three names of Jesus together. Uh, you have Savior, Christ, and Lord. And so I think just to unpack that for a moment, uh, Savior is, is who Jesus is. Um, remember, Jesus' name means Yahweh is salvation. Uh, when you go to the other gospel accounts, remember the angel of the Lord comes to, to Joseph and says, uh, do not be afraid to take Mary because the child that she has is from the Holy Spirit. And he tells Joseph, and you will call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Jesus' name means Savior, means Yahweh is salvation. Christ uh, is the New Testament word for the Old Testament word, Messiah. Messiah is the Hebrew word from the Old Testament. It means the anointed one, the one who is promised to come and to save their, his people from their sins. And that word Messiah is translated in the New Testament in the Greek as Christ. So that's who we're talking about, the Messiah, the Christ. And this word Lord uh, simply means master. He is uh, Lord of all. He, he is King of kings and Lord of Lord, glory, hallelujah. Uh, that's who he is, and this refers to his sovereignty. So these three names, in fact, tell us exactly who Jesus is. This child, this baby, is the Savior. He is the Messiah, the Christ, and he is the Lord of all. He is uh, the only one who can bring salvation uh, because Acts 4.12 states it well and says that there is salvation in no other or no one else because there is no name that has been given under heaven among men by which we must be saved. There is salvation in no other name, uh, Buddha, Allah, whatever the name is, whatever the religion is, uh, there is no salvation found in any of them. 
The only way to get to heaven is through the one who is named Jesus, who laid down his life to pay for the sins of all who would believe in him. So this is the gospel truth that we're looking at tonight. This is the gospel truth that, uh, as you can tell, uh, visitors, if you're just meeting me tonight, this gets me excited. Uh, this gets me excited. This gets me amped up. Uh, I hope it does for, for you too. Uh, but this is the good news of the gospel, uh, that we are called to profess and proclaim it. And we see the angels of God doing that here in this, this angel. And that's the same thing that we are called to do. We are also called to proclaim the truth of this gospel and to, to tell it to people, to pro profess it to the people around us. Well, a second and final point of emphasis uh, and application tonight comes um, from verses 13 and 14, and it says that suddenly with this angel, uh, this angel is joined by a multitude of heavenly hosts. That just means angels, okay, angelic beings. And, and what does it say that they are doing? All of a sudden, imagine the scene here that, that these shepherds are seeing. Here's this angel, and they're scared. He says, do not be afraid. Here's the great news. God wants you to go and see this family and this baby that's been born. And then all of a sudden, they see just a multitude of angels there uh, praising God and singing praises to God uh, to this baby who's just been born. Like, this had to be just an awesome uh, sight and an amazing night there. So it says they're praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. So from this verse, we can actually derive uh, truth of the gospel here uh, that God is not pleased with all men. This text says peace to those whom God is pleased with, which infers that he is not pleased with everyone. And that's because he's not pleased with us because of our sin against him. And so with that being said, who is it that he is pleased with? How do we know what pleases God? And the answer is in the gospel, what we talked about. Who is it that receives this peace <clears throat> that they are talking about? It's those who believe in the good news. It's those who receive the gospel truth uh, by faith and believe in this message of hope that we've been talking about in the Advent series, this, uh, this present of peace, if you will, uh, the gift of joy, which is all about this act of an indescribable love uh, that God has for his children. So for those of us who are in Christ, those who receive uh, this gospel, you receive his peace and you are pleasing to him. And, and that's so hard for me to, to recognize in my humanity because I know that I still continue to do things that are not pleasing to God. But I know that if I'm in Christ, I have been forgiven and that I continue to confess and repent of those things because he desires for us to grow to be more like him, right? In our sanctification process, we are trying to, to strive to be more Christ-like. And so it's difficult and we fail and we stumble and we fall. But we are to, to get right back up. We help one another up. We help a, to spur one another on into love and good deeds, as the author of Hebrews says. And so I want to encourage you this evening, uh, wherever you may be, whatever may be happening, uh, if you are a child of God, you have the peace of God. You have the hope that comes with Christ. You have this joy that is within, within you, and you need to understand and recognize how loved you are by the one who spoke all things into existence. And that's an amazing thing because he is an amazing God. So those who are in Christ are pleasing to God. And it's not that, it's not because of anything I've done, right? It's not that we are pleasing to God because we've done anything to please him or that we've done anything to earn his favor. It's because he has done everything, Christ, to please God, the Father. And so in Christ, we are pleasing to the Father. So when God looks down upon you, he sees a son. He sees a daughter. He sees someone who's been redeemed by the precious blood of the lamb that he sent to save people from their sins and to redeem the people that he chose to love before the foundation of the world, if we really want to blow our mind tonight, right? So it's an amazing thing, this gospel truth. What an amazing love uh, that the, the Father has for his children. And I certainly pray that uh, you are a child of God here tonight. And so I thank you for being here this evening. Uh, when we are in Christ, we are pleasing to God. And Paul uh, just, just speaks of this in 2 Corinthians 9, verse 15, uh, where he says, Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. 
This is an incredible, indescribable gift. Uh, just as we spoke about today with the unspeakable joy. It's not that the joy is unspeakable or stops us or prevents us from speaking it. In fact, the joy is so overwhelmingly amazing, it, it compels us to speak. And, and so it's the same with this gift. We can't describe it, but we can give thanks for it. And we can share that good news with others so that they too uh, would understand the gospel and know what it is that Christ has done for us. And I want to close tonight, uh, as we were singing many hymns tonight, uh, one of my favorite hymns, uh, just a, a, a stanza, a short verse from, from the song here. And uh, the writer, the words say, why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart. I know most of you know the rest. His wounds have paid my ransom. That's the gospel. That's Isaiah 53. That is Jesus, the baby who was born and suffered and died on the cross for us. That's who we celebrate. That's who we recognize. I pray that we would keep that front and center and on the front burner as we go about our, our Christmas season tomorrow. Uh, but certainly beyond that, however many days we are, are, are appointed and God gives us, uh, may we continue to keep that our focus. Heavenly Father, we uh, give you thanks and praise. And uh, just for all that you've done for us, God, because we know that we are not worthy, uh, that we are undeserving of your love for us, that we, in fact, your word tells us we're at enmity with you, that we were uh, enemies, Lord, against you in our sin. And even worse, you were at enmity with us and at war with us because of your wrath upon us, which we deserve. But God, thank you so much that you have chose to give us this indescribable gift, this, this amazing love, uh, this, this grace that you have lavished upon us. Uh, as John writes in his gospel, uh, grace upon grace that you have given us, much more abundant than, when, than we ever deserve or ever could deserve and, and ever could uh, earn. Uh, but God, it's not because of us. It's because of you and what you've done. So we give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise to you. And God, we just uh, love you and give you thanks for what this Christmas season resembles. And that's Jesus Christ, the one who loved us and gave himself for us. Amen. Amen. If you would, please stand and we will uh, part this evening with a song. Son of God, love's pure life, rain beams from thy holy face. With the dawn of redeeming grace, 
Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Merry Christmas. God bless you.